Good afternoon everyone, thanks for joining us here again. This is Mike at the Help Desk, and today we're going to do a short video on the April Enrollment Counts Report, which is also going to include the, your student demographics that are normally on your May Accountability Report. Uh, so for this year, due to the uh, nature of the COVID situation, um, and where assessments didn't happen as they normally do, um, rather than having you do two separate reports, we've just moved those student demographics over to the April. That way you just have one report to submit over. Um, and it was a fairly easy uh, thing for us to move over. So just one thing to note, it is going to have uh, your enrollment counts and those demographics. Uh, this report uh, will be in NEO, and you will need access to the student data module to get there. Uh, if you don't have access to this, um, have your superintendent submit a help desk um, access form and we can get that added for you. Uh, speaking of the help desk, uh, more detailed instructions for this report are found up on the help desk. If you come over to our page and scroll down to the data reporting instructions, it will be this top link right here for the April 1 enrollment report and that will give you uh, a very detailed explanation of how the report operates, how to complete it, uh, and everything. But today we'll do a more uh, hands-on approach, and I'll show you how to do it here. So if we come back to the report, or rather to NEO, we will go into Student Data, and then to Student Reports. And if we filter our reporting area to Enrollments, that will pull the April enrollment count report right to the top. Um, even with the changes to how we were reporting quarters this year, uh, this is basically going to be uh, your count of students that you'd be responsible for instructing uh, that are in, uh, attending your schools as of April 1st. So even though we've ended quarter three for March 13th, um, we are not asking you to ha take attendance on April 1st. This is just that list of students that you would have in your schools. Uh, that way we can calculate public school tuition rates for how many kids you're going to have in your buildings. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not an attendance report. It's just, you know, how many kids will you have uh, attending your schools? So if we click view report, that will bring us in. And uh, unless you've got access to multiple districts, it'll show you all of them down below. Uh, for the purposes of the video today, we're just going to uh, look at Acton Public Schools. So I'll hit View on the right. And all of the data in these reports and the counts are all publicly available after the fact, so we're not going to see anything sensitive. Uh, I'll blur out any relevant uh, student information uh, in post. But once we come in here, it'll give you a little dashboard, and you'll have a few different reports you can look at. Uh, the top one here is your count details report. So that's going to be the one that has all of your actual uh, student lists on it. Um, that's where the demographics are going to be listed and whether they're giving you that counts attending that we'll look at in a moment. Uh, you're also going to have an error report. Um, the error uh, name is kind of a bit of a misnomer because they're really just going to be flagging students that are not um, of appropriate age to receive counts. So these are going to be your less than uh, three-year-olds or younger or uh, 20 year olds or older. Those will show up as quote errors and not give you uh, counts. And then the other two reports, your out of district placement uh, is going to be the students. Um, it's going to be a year round report. Uh, we've got a separate video on that that can just show you your outplaced kids. And then the last one is your attending student download is a, another year-round report that shows you every student that you have put an enrollment in for. Um, they can be helpful depending on what you need to look at, but really all you need is just this count details, which we'll go into. And so this will pull up the report. And what we're going to be looking at, uh, it's going to list their, uh, their attending district and school, you know, resident district, resident town, and then you'll get uh, the state ID numbers. And if we move over to the right here, we'll see the rest of the report. And this is kind of uh, really what you're looking at. So here you'll see the added demographics. We've got whether or not uh, we know their foster care, 
uh, what their economic status is, their EL, if they're English learner, special ed, if they're a military family, if they're homeless, then their race and ethnicity. So these are what we have just added. And then, uh, as always, for this report, there's going to be whether or not they give you that counts attending over on the right. So these are the main pieces you're going to be concerned with here, is making sure that these uh, the demographics and enrollments you've put into Synergy are accurate. Um, all of this data on these reports gets pulled from Synergy, and that's going to happen every hour. And once again, on the Help Desk page, if we come back to the front, we do have a nice timer. Uh, letting you know when that data pull is going to happen. So if you just make, if you update a student's, um, you know, special ed and synergy, um, it's going to take at least this long um, until it shows up on the report. So that's just a, a handy trick. But if we come back over, um, essentially how you would want to approach this is for each one of these different uh, demographic groups, typically getting this, uh, filtering this list. Uh, for instance, we can pull all of our special ed students to the top. If we just filter this uh, a couple times here. And um, essentially you can grab, show all of the students that are counting as special ed. Uh, you can then pass that list off to you know, your special ed director. They can uh, verify whether or not everybody's accounted for in that uh, area. Um, same thing with, you know, homelessness and economically disadvantaged, you know, your McKinney-Vento liaison can handle um, usually the homeless piece. Um, so, you, know, you can kind of divvy this out, and as long as your data has been upkept in Synergy this year, then uh, you shouldn't really have a whole lot of work to do on this report. And we'll take another look real quick at the accounts attending field. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to filter this for a moment. And so right now we're going to look at the ones who are not giving ACT and Accounts Attending. And those are always going to be accompanied by a note. So for instance, this student is attending WABAN. So that is going to be determined by the student's special ed record in Synergy. If they have a placement of separate school and they also have that concurrent enrollment, um, then it's automatically going to know that the student's actually attending that uh, special purpose private school and it'll move the count attending over to Waban. Um, but if we go down and look through, um, there's a bunch of other students down below that are paid by resident SAU. Um, as we know, Acton doesn't operate a, a 9-12 school. Their high schoolers you know, usually go to Sanford. So um, those students that are attending Sanford don't give Acton account. Uh, they would give uh, Sanford the count. So that's kind of what's going on here. That's something very common uh, that you guys will see as well. Um, and that's essentially all you need to keep in mind for this report is that it's only going to give you accounts attending if the student physically attends in your building. So, but yep, if, if all of the, these fields are accurate, uh, the counts look good to you. We're going to go back to the um, dashboard page for the report. And uh, you and your superintendent, if you want, uh, can click review. This will bring you to the certification page. And here it will give you a breakdown of all of your schools that you have in the district, uh, how many counts they're giving you and what their grade ranges are. Um, we will also show you what your October counts were down below because uh, that's just a helpful indicator where if, if there's a large discrepancy between what your October numbers were and what your April numbers are, um, we'll try to let you know here and put them in bold uh, font to show you that. But um, if all of the accounts look good, uh, your superintendent can hit this cer submit slash certify button and that will complete the report. Uh, then it will be up to us over here to accept it and those timestamps will get shown down in this area here. But that is essentially the April enrollment counts report. Um, as always, if you have questions, uh, you can contact the help desk. But uh, thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one.